before I begin with the invocation for this evening, I want to call your attention to the olive wreath and the candle that has been placed in the ceremonial space. I'm going to ask Moses if you can light the candle. For those of you that may not be aware, there are so many different meanings behind the olive tree. It's a symbol of friendship and reconciliation, cleansing, healing, light, victory, richness, and above all, it's a sign of peace. The candle within its center represents two losses that deserve recognition here tonight. The first are those we have lost during the global pandemic of COVID-19. And the second are for those we have lost to perhaps an even larger pandemic, the victims, young and old, who have been lost to us at the hands of systemic racism. May their spirits continue to burn brightly, and please join me in a moment of silence, and I will begin the prayer. Good and gracious God, who loves and delights in all people, we stand in awe before you, knowing that differences among cultures and races are multicolored manifestations of your divine light. As we come together for this momentous ceremony at Wagner College, may our hearts and minds be open to celebrate similarities and differences amongst our brothers and sisters. The graduates who stand before us are our future Lord. We know there is work to be done and that the class of 2021 is tasked with doing much of that work. The stoles they will receive tonight are symbols of both where they come from and where they are going. As they don these garments, we ask you, help them to teach others not to rush to a language of healing before they truly embrace the complexity of our wounds. Help them to show the world we cannot speak of reconciliation without first speaking of restoration. Grant these young people the ability to repair a world that has become so fractured by division. Remind them daily of the difference between false peace over a righteous peace. Help them to heal your family, Lord. Empower each of them tonight and every night by your Holy Spirit. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. My name is Ange Conception and I serve as the Assistant Dean of Campus Life. Thank you so much for being in community with us for our Men of Color Initiative and Women of Color Initiative graduation stole ceremony this evening. To our graduates, we are incredibly proud of your accomplishments, especially under such uniquely challenging circumstances. To friends and family joining us virtually, we recognize the unwavering support and love you have provided to our graduates. I would now like to invite President Joel W. Martin to provide his remarks to our graduates. Thank you, Dr. Concepcion, and thank you, um, Holly Bonner, for those prophetic words. They really spoke to me and to Wagner College. They're well, well spoken, and they speak to us tonight. As we're here to celebrate and enjoy uh, your achievement, we are indeed, as Dr. Concepcion said, very proud of you all, whether you're joining us virtually or in person, class of 2020, class of 2021, thank God we're here together in person, able to recognize you as a community, your great achievement. Soon we'll be having our commencement ceremonies, class of 2020, depending on the weather, this Saturday, and again next week, class of 2021, and that is the meaning of our community. That is the purpose of this college, the reason it's here. All of us who work here worked really hard this year to make this possible. And when we see you process across the stage and receive your diplomas, it will remind us of our deepest purpose. You are our deepest purpose. And we are honored to be able to be with you tonight in this moment where we're going to have the ceremony to bestow upon you the stoles of the kente cloth with the deep symbolism of the virtues that are encoded in that cloth and on the other side there's the wagner green and that is the complexity of who we are 
We honor you in every aspect of your being. We revere you as accomplished young people who are about to graduate. And we want to reassure you that you always have a home here. Uh, I hope you will look to this campus as a bomb, an oasis, a place to come for refuge and recovery, for growth. I welcome you back. You are going to be alums soon. You'll always have a home, a home here. A couple of you are alums. I see them from the class of 2020. We want you to always come back to Wagner. We're very proud of you. And you honor us by your achievement. We could not be more proud of you and all that you've done. Many ancestors have worked really hard to make this possible. They come from many different places and they've all come together in this moment. They're all recognizing you in this moment tonight and they'll be watching you as you go forward to make the world better as we all believe you will. So from the bottom of my heart, on behalf of Wadley College, congratulations, uh, well done, and we look forward to seeing you at the commencement ceremonies. Hello, my name is Tristan Kawi. Uh, I'm a freshman uh, theater performance major here, and I'll be singing What I Did for Love. Kiss today goodbye The sweetness and the sorrow Wish me luck the same to you And I won't regret What I did for love what I did for love Look, my eyes are dry The gift was ours to borrow It's as if we always knew But I won't forget what I did for love, what I did for love, gone. Love is never gone, as we travel on, love what we'll remember Kiss to day goodbye And point me towards tomorrow We did what we had to I won't forget, can't regret what I did for love, what I did for love, what I did for love, and I won't forget what I did for love.
Tristan for your um, performance. Um, now we'd like to have our student leaders uh, speak. Um, first we have uh, Ms. Shawnee Payne. Oh. Yes, A-okay. Okay, great. In light of the ever-changing world around us, we have all been experiencing challenges and facing unexpected obstacles. The COVID-19 pandemic alone has forced us all to reimagine our college learning and social experiences. Additionally, our country has been in a state of unrest due to the social injustice and racial discrimination afflicted upon communities of color globally. Looking back on my past four years at Wagner, I am grateful for the moments I have been able to serve as an advocate, leader, and mentor for other students. With both of my parents being healthcare providers and educators, at an early age, I developed a desire to care for others as I watched them carry out their careers. Growing up as a young black girl in the city of Philadelphia, I came from an environment that perpetuated more violence than positivity and lack the financial means to devote to improving its educational system. At times, I did not think I would have the opportunity to gain what I lacked so socially, culturally, and educationally. When I began my freshman year at Wagner, my goal was to make a change to have a more inclusive college atmosphere. This motivation ignited me to start a diversity and inclusion initiative and become part of Wagner College Student Government Association, where I became diversity and inclusion senator. I wanted to provide a different voice for students who felt underrepresented and uncomfortable to express their grievances. This year, serving as SGA president was definitely the most challenging, but also eye-opening. With social injustice and racial discrimination on the forefront, I felt an even bigger push to keep being involved and inserting myself into new spaces. I recall, to speaking, I recall speaking to some of my peers after the murder of George Floyd and seeing students of our campus community protesting nationwide. After a conversation about allyship, I distinctly remember one of my peers stating, she was too busy and had too much going on in her life and felt it wasn't her place to encourage allyship on Wagner College campus. It was from that point when I realized that there was still a lot more work to be done on Wagner's college campus and we need to engage ourselves in difficult conversations in a more open forum. 
Working throughout the year, I had to continuously remind myself that it was okay to talk about my identity and what I was experiencing, although it made some of my fears feel uncomfortable because my identity is a big part of my reality. Majority of the leadership roles that I have started with on campus in some shape or form, whether I noticed it or not at the time, aligned with my identity or something I wanted to improve for students of color on campus. When I had the pleasure of speaking virtually at the Brianna Tella visual held on campus this past fall, I felt an obligation as an African American woman and holding the position of SGA president and a student leader at this institution to speak about injustices that are continuously afflicted upon the black community. I wanted to encourage my peers, friends, and those in positions of power to use their voice to advocate for equal rights. After this experience and the overwhelming support from faculty and administration, I wanted to continue to allow our community to engage in conversations that will inspire everyone to engage and interact with others from different communities. As I embarked on my college career a little over four years ago, I never thought I would have so many impactful experiences that will help to shape my identity and what I aspire to stand for. All of what I have experienced thus far, both rewarding and demoralizing, has taught me the true meaning of resilience and staying committed regardless of the outcome. Wagner has presented us all with opportunities to learn, grow, and lead. Although this year may not have gone as planned for many of us, I wanted to remind all the seniors here today that your passion and hard work does not go unnoticed. As you enter into your next chapter, continue to pursue every experience with patience, persistence, and perseverance. Always remember that the race is not given to the swift, but to those who endure until the end. Thank you. to start by thanking Sharnay for the such powerful speech. She talked about leadership in hard and difficult times. She also mentioned about using our voice. I thought it was such a powerful and well-written speech. First and foremost, I would like to thank you all for giving me the honor to speak here today. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Moses. I'm originally from Honduras. Growing up, I practically grew up in a bubble. I rarely had experience or engaged with anybody from a different culture besides my own. For those of you who know me, I'm the furthest thing for a shy person. But in my first, during my first year at the United States, that was the case. I closed off to everybody who did not align with my standards, with my notion, or my perspective. This change being part, a part of the Port Richmond Partnership Leadership Academy, which was facilitated by Wagner College. I experienced Wagner civic engagement early on. I remember having a conversation with Leo, also another one with Arlette, where I just talk about aspects of life that I wanted to improve. I wanted to talk about the goals, the things that I wanted to achieve, the change that I wanted to see. I remember when I talked to him, I told him that I wanted to gain skills such as communication, discipline, attention to detail, and more, to help others, my family, and myself. It was then when I first heard the saying that if I wanted to have something that I never had, I must do something that I never did. Slowly but surely, I started to engage not only with my peers, but also with nearby communities. In high school, I did over, a thousand, over 400 hours of community service. And through the Bonner program, I have done over 1,000 hours in my four years at Wagner. Now that I'm a senior, I question myself and wonder if that was a good decision. The answer is always the same. It's absolutely worth it. Not only because I learned from first experiences how to deal with problems that I include racism and also problems that deal with our community, but also because I get to make an impact in those lives. I also get to experience and learn from them and get the skills that I never would have had otherwise. Being a part of the Wagner community allowed me to have and meet incredible and talented people who shape who I am today, Pedro being one of them. Organizations such as BSU and Alma engage me in thoughtful but un 
on experience conversations regarding diversity, social justice, and action. The Management and Marketing Club allowed me to engage in professionalism, networking, and financial skills. Interversity helped me not only to love my neighbor, but also to love those around me, regardless of their orientation, their spiritual beliefs, uh, their views, their color, regardless of whatever, I learned how to love them. The Select program encouraged collaboration instead of competition. It's one of the things that I've never seen in a program. It's so unique to Wagner that we all build upon each other. Working with the international office allowed me to receive an additional perspective to the one I was used to. I gained valuable experience not only on how to do things for certain projects and work, but also about policies and reform needed in our country regarding mass incarceration and the things that other countries do differently. That encouraged me to take action and just learn more about it and see how can I impact my community. The modern program, like I said before, allowed me to further my passion to help people, as well as my communication and critical thinking, an organization that allowed me to be part of the real world in tough situations. Nelson Mandela once said that there's no passion to be found in playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one we're capable of living. I related to the statement because if I stayed in my bubble, if I stayed in my comfort zone, I would never have learned half of the things I know today. I would never engage with so, such wonderful people, and I will never just have network. It's one of the things that I, each and every day I wake up and I'm grateful for. Now, I just wanted to let you know that I encourage everybody that is here to pursue whatever they're looking for. I encourage you to always remember that just because you're doing a lot more doesn't mean that you're getting a lot more done. Focus on what's important to you. Focus on what's going on. Focus on your passions and the challenges that are different for everybody. Yes, do not stop learning each and every day. But also, don't forget that you have valuable skills, each and every one of you, to be part of the solution and not the problem. And more importantly, to take care of yourself and others. Thank you so much for your time. And I want to bring Sadiq to the podium. Good evening, everybody. Um, first, I would like to take this time to thank Moses and Charnay and uh, Tristan Cowley uh, for just uh, showing the excellence here at Wagner College, even in a freshman and all the way up to a senior. It's just, I mean, I mean that's the reason why I work here. Um, so, good evening. Um, it has been stated that who you see is who you see within yourself. This past year was filled with uncertainties and difficult for many of us in different ways. As people of color, we were dealing with two pandemics, the COVID-19 pandemic and the realities of racial injustice. During this time, we came together as a community and emerged awakened and inspired to be part of the solution. We formed connections through our struggles and our ambition. We stood together during a candlelight vigil in the wake of what felt like defeat for Breonna Taylor and victims of AAPI hate. We found creative ways to be together while adhering to COVID-19 protocols. Work of this magnitude is impossible to do by one person. Um, before I pretend, present the Kente Stoles to the graduates, I wish to thank all the people whose commitment to our students made this work possible. Um, Jasmine uh, Clark Glover, Vice President of Workplace Culture and Inclusion, thank you for your invaluable support of these initiatives. Over the years, these initiatives have gone through several transitions and difficult times. Um, in fact, I remember times you spent your own money to make sure that we had something to sustain us during our in-person meeting. Um, in fact, we ate all the pizza and chicken wings <laughs> and um, sometimes forgot to thank you, but you kept supporting us anyways. Um, without your leadership, this community wouldn't be where it is right now, and for that I am thankful. Professor Anthony Turner, Mr. Don Wilson, thank you for your dedication to 
the gentlemen in the Men of Color Initiative and supporting me in this work. Uh, Desiree and Letty, thank you for holding space where women of color have found their tribe and the ways in which they deserve to be loved. Um, tonight, we will recognize each graduate from the Men of Color Initiative from the class of 2020 and class of 2021 with the custom-made kente cloth to serve as a reminder of the community that they formed together here at Wagner College. Kente clothes are used in ceremonies throughout the African diaspora to recognize and celebrate milestones in your life. Kente is a traditional garment worn by the Akan people of Ghana and the Kingdom of Ashanti royalty. The idea of wearing Kente stoles during graduation originated with the Pan-African movement in the 1950s. These garments were handmade by a Senegalese tailor in Harlem. We had him add a silk lining to be Wagner green, so that as you stood with pride, wearing your stoles on graduation, you will always remember your home here at Grimes Hill. Tonight, I will call up each graduate with an individual from the Wagner College community who have assisted each graduate uh, throughout their journey here at Wagner College. I will begin with the class of 2020. Terrell Braithway is a sociology major, member of the inaugural cohort of the Presidential Fellowship. As an undergraduate, Terrell served as a lead academy mentor and a residential assistant. He was also a member of the Black Student Union and the Men of Color Initiative. Um, Mrs. Desiree Braithway will bestow the kente on Terrell. Next is Jonathan Rizari. Jonathan was a business administration major, um, and uh, he was also a captain on the Wagner College football team, uh, the black student, a member of the Black Student Union, first president of ALMA, Men of Color Initiative, Student Athlete Advisory Committee, community leader, and MOVE program student coordinator. Jonathan was very busy as a student. <laughs> and um, Mrs. Gloria Macchioli and Mrs. Letty uh, Romero will present the Kento Stowe to Jonathan. Next is Mr. Adedayo Adibo. Uh, Mr. Adedayo was a uh, um, nursing major. Um, he was also a member of the Wagner College football team, a residential assistant, um, lead program coordinator, member of the Student Nurse Association, and also the Men of Color Initiative. It is my honor to bestow the kente on uh, Mr. Adedayo. Up next is uh, Mr. Pedro Saint, uh, Santiago. Mr. Pedro was a English major, minor in uh, sociology and civic engagement. Uh, he was an active member of the Black Student Union, a bonding leader with placement at Napella where he taught English to immigrants from Liberia, mentored students, um, high school, high achieving student in the Poor Richmond Partnership Leadership Academy. Um, Mr. Pedro also traveled with me to Kenya, uh, great experience. Um, 
And uh, Mr. Sean Lawson will bestow the kente on Pedro. Next is Mr. Moses Ramos Lino. Uh, Mr. Moses was a business, uh, business management and economics minor. He was the president of InterVarsity, um, president also for the uh, Management and Marketing Club, member of ALMA, MCI, BSU, and Bonner Leader. Um, Mrs. Holly Bonner will bestow the kente on Moses. Finally, Mr. Lynn Paul Rodney. Um, Mr. Lynn Paul Rodney was a film and media studies uh, major with a minor in art. Um, he was a brother of Theta Chi, member of BSU, and the marching band. Um, unfortunately, Mr. Stephen Ennis is not here, so it'll be my honor to bestow the Kente Club on you. my distinct honor to turn it over to Mrs. Desiree Braithwaite. Of the, excuse me, the mission of the Women of Color Initiative is to empower women of color holistically to feel confident and courageous in who they are, recognizing unique challenges they may experience at Wagner. I had the privilege this year to mentor this group of sisterhood with, Ms., with the VP Jasmine, Jasmine Clark Weber. Upon completion of their senior year, the women received the beautiful scarves you see on the table to your left. This work would not have been possible, as Sadiq said, without the village that began two years ago. With the help of Jasmine, Don, Anthony, Letty, and Sadiq, we spent many evenings fellowshipping, chatting, eating, and building this program. The scarves bestowed upon the women this evening are called Powerful and is, and is from the artist Cynthia St. James. She is known for her vibrant, excuse me, she is known for her vibrantly colored painting of the on the cover of the 1995 book, Waiting to, Ex Waiting to Exhale by Terry McMillan. The book was not only groundbreaking an ode to the lives of single African-American women, but its cover art helped put St. James on the national map. It has also spurred a collection of copycat artists who mix her style of clean lines and vibrant colors. Cynthia St. James has also created two stamps for the United States Postal Service. The first St. James stamp, the first St. James Kwanzaa stamp was created and issued in 1977. That stamp depicted a family of African, of African descent and sold over 133 million stamps. The second time that, that St. James created a, was a Kwanzaa stamp for the Postal Service, and it is befitting that the Postal Service tapped St. James to create the new, the new stamps commemorating the 50th anniversary of Kwanzaa. Kwanzaa, celebra Kwanzaa celebrations focus on the importance of family, community, and culture. The United States Postal Service is happy to con continue with its tradition celebrating Kwanzaa. Established in 1966, Kwanzaa is a seven-day celebration honor honoring African first harvest traditions and culture. This particular painting, Powerful, was, introduced, was inspired by the, 
by the May 14, 2014 Phenomenal Woman Awards Luncheon at the YMCA Greater Los Angeles, which has been recognizing exceptional leadership since 1975. Leadership that directly parallels their own in engaged mission to eliminate racism, empower women, and promote peace, justice, freedom, and dignity for all. Tonight, Ms. Sharnae Payne, a member of the class of 2021, will receive this scarf. She's a biology major and allied health minor, allied health minor, president of the Student Government Association, vice president of the Black Student Union, diversity director and health educator, peer health exchange member, member of tri Beta Biolog Biological Honor Society and community leader. These are just some of the roles Sharnae has had while, while a student here at Wagner. She is indeed an exceptional leader. We look forward to the accomplishments post-graduation. It is my honor, with the help of Ms. Clark Weber, to bestow the powerful scarf upon Charnay. Congratulations to all the graduates. I now introduce Ruta. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Good evening, and what a beautiful, but a little bit warm, uh, night here and a fitting celebration for each of you and your successes. Nelson Mandela said, education is the great engine of personal development. It is through education that a daughter of a peasant can become a doctor, that the son of a mine worker can become the head of the mine, that a child of farm workers can become a the leader of a, the president of a great nation. It is what we make out of what we have, not what we are given, that separates one person from another. Each of you has taken what you have and polished it and reached an impressive milestone in your lives, graduation. And you did it all within a pandemic. So <laughs> kudos to all of you. As the stoles and scarves sit on your shoulders, remember that the strands of the cloth are woven with your hard work, with your resiliency, in the face of challenges, the confidence of your successes, and the humility and appreciation of all those who helped you get here, your faculty, your family, your friends, and many, many more. And remember, it's also woven with responsibility that each of you needs to lean back and help the others that come after you so that they can also achieve similar goals. You have made yourselves into powerful young change leaders, and we hope that you will wear these stoles and scarves with pride, dignity, tradition, and heritage. We wish you the best as you continue your journey after Wagner College. Congratulations to each of you and your families. And I also want to take a moment to thank Sadiq Suleimani, Letty Romero, and Desiree Braithwaite for putting together tonight's ceremony. Rituals are so important, especially in uncertain times. I wish you all a lovely evening, and I I'm happy to continue to celebrate your successes over the next couple of weeks. And thank you, all of you at home, for joining us and helping to celebrate these wonderful leaders. Congratulations. Congratulations.